what's up folks it's chris here with uh sticky's cabana podcast once again we are back again we finally made it back i should say after a little hiatus today we're going to do episode 10 and with me today i have guest fire white what's up everybody so if you don't mind tell us a little bit about yourself all right so we'll start with the name fire white um so uh my name is candace with a k and um my papa named me and I'm very proud of my name so I looked it up and I did some research and I figured out that it means brilliantly white in a fourth century Ethiopian Queens and so I took that and I took my love for fire um, and yeah I just uh, came up with fire white there we go very good very good so you're Columbia native here yeah um, born in uh, Paducah Kentucky and then raised here in Columbia there we go and been here quite a long time, I guess, doing yes, everything. Yes, yes. Yeah, right on. So you had the opportunity to play with us at the Cabana, I think, uh, in 21, and then as well, again, so far this year for the benefit. Yeah. Uh, you mind telling everybody what you think about uh, everything out there at the Cabana? Oh, man. Um, you guys are just, you know, you guys are just swell people. You're all just awesome, and it's like family vibes is the best thing that I would say for you guys you're all just like you're so you know you don't have to you don't have to feel you know like oh like normally you know I go to a bar or a place like that and I feel like for some reason I'm always in the corner and uh, there I never once felt like I needed to stand off or you know anything like that I felt very just like um, it was all very genuine good yeah. feels so it made it easy to just relax and and have a good time well there we go there we go well in the off season this past year uh, we uh, rebuilt our stage and you were one of the ones that came out and did major repairs with yeah. us and we very much appreciate <laughs> that yeah that was a great time I love working with Topher yeah um, he's pretty much like my favorite besides you of course <laughs> um, yeah and uh yeah so i own my own home and it taught me a lot of how to you know do a lot of things that you never you know would think you know in your everyday life depending on what you do for work um yeah so i learned how to toenail learned how to you know pretty much do anything to build things to tear it down um demolishing is always super fun but uh yeah building it building it right um yeah it's a great time so I was happy to be there to help I can definitely say it's strong it's definitely sturdy this year last year we had the trampoline stage (laughs) yeah it was a little wonky I was bouncing around quite a bit up there you'd move one thing and (laughs) and something in the back would do this to you back (laughs) here and you know this year uh we we haven't had that problem at all we've uh we I know myself I've jumped straight up and down on it (laughs) You get a 320-pound man to jump straight up and down on a stage and it doesn't move, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do believe. So, um, back in 2020, when the Backstreet Boys reunion made their tour come back <laughs> here, you know, with the virus, um, did that affect anything with the way that you uh, performed music? Um, it actually did affect me quite a bit because I just moved to Kansas City and I've been trying to get this career, you know, um, go off, off my feet and start flying and uh, so I thought Kansas City would be a great place to go um, me and my wife went and uh, you know she's got family there I have family there and so you know it just felt like okay big city we know people um, let's go and uh, started off great pretty much right after my first open mic that I did yeah. it was like you're shut that. down you got to stay in the house yeah. and uh yeah you know um i want to say it was it was you know unfortunate that that happened but at the same time like i found myself in a new way because i was so isolated and alone i didn't have all my friends and family you know from columbia which i lived my whole life so um yeah like I was able to find myself in ways that I hadn't before because like the noise of others and like the busy life around you and like someone always needing something or wanting something or you know just like life and up there it was pretty much just you know me and my wife and our cats and uh you know it's our choice to go visit you know our family up there you know we're not being 
I don't know. It's just it yeah. was just different. It was um, definitely strange. So yeah. I was able to to write new music yeah. and um, yeah, just enjoy like myself without the noise of others around me constantly. That constant like little chirping, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you know, with me, I'm in my mid to upper forties, and so I finally learned what Zoom was. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I uh, you know, had Zoom calls with people, you know, because instead of going to visit them, you know, we just, you know, that's how we, that's how we stayed in contact. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I felt pretty special when I learned Zoom. That was pretty neat. You know, it took a little bit, but, you know, a little little trial by error, yeah. for sure. Are you the type of person that just, like, you know, holds your phone yeah. and you get, like, you know, this really, like, you got your neck shot or, yep. you know, yep. like, oh, My man. My forehead, they're like, they're like, they're like, sticky, pull your phone down a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, why don't you just set the phone down? Like, yeah. you know, just, like, set it down, prop it up, yep. and then, So my yeah, mom was like, telling me. People. My mom's, you know, 20 years older than me. And she's like, Chris, hold the phone, <laughs> set it down. Just, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know, and I'm like, but mom, I want you to see me. And she goes, I can see you if you set it down. <laughs> I want you to see me, mom. Can yeah, I'm right here. Hey, can you hear me now? You know, like the old cell phone thing. Can you hear me now? You know, type of thing. So that's what happened within 20 with it, with everything. In 21, shows started popping back up. What was your first show of 21? Honestly, I think I took a hiatus for a long period of time. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I just, um, like I said, I found myself differently Mm -hmm. and um, being so isolated that I just kept going, kept going, kept going. And it took until meeting Draven Morningstar um, at his job at the time. Yeah. um, That, and then I met you. So it was like, I've been dying to come out for so long, you know, and I had so much material and and I was really excited about it, but... um, but I, because I didn't get out much, yeah. it, like, made it hard to, you know, connect with the right people. And, yeah, I just uh, I just didn't feel comfortable in this scene in Columbia. Yeah. Um, I yeah. felt like, I don't know, I felt, like, super judged on, like, a really heavy level. And I don't know. I've I guess, heard that. I guess, like, when I went out, when I met Josh, you know, I, I or Draven Morningstar, mm-hmm. I loved, like, his genuineness and his like hardcoreness, you know, yeah. like we both like horror movies and stuff. Like yeah. I think I was wearing a Halloween shirt at the time, and that's how we became friends. But um, yeah, so it took until him going, "Hey, do you want to do the show with me in October?" And I'm like, "Hell yeah, let's yeah, get it!" Let's so get um, and then yeah, I haven't, I haven't stopped since. No. So and then you got, you know, you gave me another opportunity, and then I have another opportunity. Yeah. I think you're playing. Up. At the end of June, aren't you? Yeah, I think it's June 25th. That's right. Yeah. That is right. Yeah, June super 25th. excited. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to be an interesting show. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm almost certain of it. I think, uh, I think it's going to be uh, you and Draven Morningstar and another guy but goes by the name of Mr. Nice Guy. Perfect. Yeah, so that, that'll be... Yeah, that's yes, exactly that's, where that's that... Right. Yeah, that's First thing I heard that, movie. I was like half-baked. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So when you come to shows, uh, what all do you uh, take with you? When you when like at the cabana, what all what kind of equipment do you bring with you? Um, so right now I'm just bringing my wireless mic. Yeah. Uh, keep it really simple. You guys already have the speakers and everything, and yeah. then and then I bring my my fire white banner to you yeah. know kind of set the mood a little bit. But yeah, really simple. That's it's all I need. Cut just and dry. The mic. Yep. Yeah, cut and dry yep. for sure. So, um, I saw that you brought some stuff with you today. Um, Pretty much, yeah, I brought my home studio. Okay. Yeah, I just brought the speakers, my laptop, and my MIDI, and my mic, and yeah. Well, if if you're game and you feel up to it, let's let's get a little bit of music in today. I'm most definitely ready. All right, let's do that. For sure. All right. Like you wouldn't know what's flash from a tree. Yeah, the heart you feel is that coming from my heart, from my heart so real. You 
giving to it like it's a curse. Put the shit down and then bleed the worst. I don't know what's worse. Hurt you, don't hurt you. You wanna get away and drive. You wanna feel what a sky meets you. Meet you with a sky, meet you, meet you with the sky. You wanna give away your rights, cause you don't know how to fight for you. Gotta know how to fight for you, know how to fight. What can you earn here? There's no degree. Everything you thought you knew and no one in between. Yeah, what can you earn here? There's no degree. Everything you thought you knew and no one in between. I crawl underneath. Loving our song in between Yes, I crawl underneath Loving our song and in between It's a mess, it's a wreck It'll take you to break you mess It's a wreck, it'll take you to break you mess I'm a wreck I'm a mess, I'm a wreck It's don't go fast Don't go fast Don't cross, don't cross You earn here, there's no degree. What can you, what can you? Everything you thought you knew, and no one in between said everything, everything. What can you earn here, there's no degree. What can you, what can you? Everything you thought you knew, and no one in between said everything you thought you knew, and no one in between. Take it from me, you don't wanna enter, don't live your life falsely. Take it from me, you don't want a picture of the buried facts in your sleeve. Take it from me, you don't want to enter, don't live your life falsely. Take it from me, you don't want a picture of the buried facts in your sleeve. Buried facts in your sleeve. Buried facts in your, buried facts in your, buried facts in your sleeve. You want to get away and drive. You want to feel what a sky meets you, meet you where the sky meets you, meet you the sky. You want to give away your rights, cause you don't know how to fight for you, gotta know how to fight for you, know how to fight rights. Everything you got to know, gotta fight for and stone cold fights. Everything, everything, yeah, I know. But you know you gotta fight for it Don't give away your eyes I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it's true I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it's true Alright, I got two more for you guys This next one's called Through the Eyes of Fear I really fucking lost it 
That's what I need. That's what I believe. That's what I need. I'm fed out, fed out. Tripped up on the words I know you hadn't. Tripped up on the words I know you hadn't. Tripped up on the words on that pain you burned. I know. Then you walk away, it ain't the same Then you, then you walk away, play the game Then you, then you walk away, it ain't the same I know Fear is why I walk away, still I run high In a holy place And fear is why I talk this way, still I run and hide, play my own game. Run and hide, play my own game. In and out, take a bow. In and out, put you down for it. Take a vow, what you down for, in and out, take a vow, in and out, just in and around, say in and out, take a vow, just in and around, what you down for, say what you down for, you got no control, you got no control, you got no Quick in seven, eight, 
Erase the hate, year 9, 10 Rewind, hit it back again, set me apart Every break my heart that rips me Yeah, trips me, yeah, that rips me Re-break my heart and yeah, one, two Set one, two And one, two Fuck it It's all on you It's affection, perception Everything out of the sun It's obsession, eruption That leads us to one more good So I don't particularly explain my music like that. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was called With Flesh and Bone We Fight. And um, the second one is Through the Eyes of Fear. And the final one is Affection Perception. Um, so I think that music is, is so powerful beyond like, the voice of like the artist that wrote it to go and oh I'm gonna dig deep into this and tell you you know like what this is about I think the most powerful thing for me when I hear music is to take it you know as ever however I take it and I want to do the same for people so I try not to like you know dig too deep and getting like oh well this is the backstory this is how I felt but I will say that you know when I write music I don't I don't particularly you know, sit down and be like, um, this is what this song is going to be about. It's more like I'm feeling really passionate. I'm feeling really creative that day. Um, maybe you got like, the vibe. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, you know, maybe I'm really upset, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like my subconscious, it, it's always kind of taken over in my music world. It's like everything that I can't say in my human form, you know, it comes out in my music. And I think that's why, like, to me, like, you know, I, I love my music, and I, I find it, like, super, you know, beautiful and passionate and powerful. And, uh, yeah, I mainly, like, you know, I just want to keep that keep that without all the noise of, like, well, this is what this is about, and this is what that's about. Mm. Yeah, so. Makes sense. Yeah, sticky, sticky question there. Oh, sticky. absolutely. Trying to catch me up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
You know how that goes. So, um, I said, yeah, sticky questions for sure. Um, so here, once again, with a sticky question for you. Um, I like to take let the viewers see a different side of the musicians, of the artists, um, a little lighter side of stuff. Other, So it's maybe not all about the music sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. And I like to ask them a few questions here. So one of the questions that I like to ask is, tell us a funny story, something about you that's happened to you here in the past. A funny story. Okay. So I, I love cats. Mm -hmm. I'm a cat person all the way. And um, growing up, I was, you know, 11 when I got into NSYNC. And uh, I had posters all over my wall, you know, kind of embarrassing to think now how obsessive I was. <laughs> but um, my cat, Buzz, he's this white cat with like a, you know, top hat black on his head and uh, a black tail. And anyway, he loved me very much. I think a little too much because he would, um, he didn't do this often or anything, but there was one in particular time where I was going to sleep and I had this Justin Timberlake poster by my bed and he was just staring at it, you know, like just looking at it as I was going to sleep and I was like, okay, like that's kind of weird. Like he's just staring at it, you know, when I woke up, I'm not even kidding. Like what, what the heck? Okay. I woke up and <laughs> that poster was shredded. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, I think he had like, you know, a little jealousy there or something. Probably but, what it was. Yeah, um, I I thought that was really funny. I was really upset, you know, at the time, but it all made sense. Like, you know, he's sitting there staring at it as I'm going to sleep, and then I wake up, and yeah, Justin Timberlake's face is like not there, you yeah. know, partially, you know, and makes sense. So yeah, yeah you're talking about Justin Timberlake. So um, you know that that was his his music when he came out. That I was I was definitely you know with my age and stuff I was mm -hmm. definitely not into that type of music at all right there, and the only song that I still know to this day that Justin Timberlake did is uh, he he did a little parody um, um, back uh, of uh, around Christmas time parody and it's called My Dick in a Box <laughs> yeah of course yeah. of course. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the only one that I can think of <laughs> off the top of my head. When I, every time I hear Justin Timberlake, I'm like, all right. I just love that he's still doing the damn thing, you know? Like, that's just, so, he, he was always my favorite, of yeah. course, and, uh. If I get enough Emmy, I'll even yeah. sing that song to my wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm proud, I'm proud of him. Yeah, for sure. I like sure. to see that he's still doing it. He is. So, uh, who's some of your all's, your, your biggest influences with music? Um, so... I uh, I want to start by saying that my mom actually, you know, she has literally been like the biggest person, in, you know, that influenced like a lot of my music besides things that I picked up on my own, like in sync. That wasn't mm -hmm. her thing, but um, she loves Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. Elvis Presley is her man. So she told me growing up that that was my dad, actually. <laughs> so I took that, you know, and of course, like. He's so inspiring, and, um, I mean, who doesn't love Elvis, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, maybe there's your bias reasons, you know, why you don't, and that's fine. He's not meant for everybody, but he's an entertainer, and um, I just loved, I loved watching him, and I loved the thought of, like, oh, you don't know who your real dad is? Okay, that'll do, Mom, thanks. So that, like, I, I don't know, I'm sure that gave me something that I wouldn't have had, you know, without that, and, um... Things that, you know, I picked up on my own. Another one was uh, Kurt Cobain. Yeah. I love Nirvana um, as a young, you know, as a young kid. Mm -hmm. Even, like, before NSYNC, you know, I was, like, mm -hmm. all about, like, Mom, like, turn that up. I want to hear that. Like, I like that. And, uh, but these days, my favorite artist to listen to, I would have to say, is anything Maynard, James Keenan. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tool, Perfect Circle, uh, Pussifer, and, um... I love Chino Marino, Deftones, yep. and Crosses, his other band too. Um, yeah, I'm hands down. And everything 90s, whether you know it's alternative or country or you know R&B. Like yep. I'm an '86 baby, so 
Yeah, yeah you grew 90s up. all the way. Yeah, you grew up in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll never get bored of the 90s. That's where you found yourself. Yeah. Yeah, for Chris sure. Chris Cornell, uh, I love him, oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Sure on that. I could keep going, but I would say... That's makes good, sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Now, you know, you kind of put two and two together uh-huh. with your music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess, like, I'm, I'm passionate, and I listen to their music, and I feel inspired, but in no way, like, am I trying to you know, sound like them or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's more of just like, you know, they like seeing them and listening to them, like it, it definitely fuels me to all right, get your ass in the studio. Yeah. You know, and yeah. And you've done some studio work here lately with uh, another uh person we had on a podcast. Yeah, um here. Draven Morning Star is one of my good yeah. friends. Yeah. And uh yeah, I've been helping him yeah. work on his album. He's already got the music and everything, so we're just recording his vocals and yeah. I'm getting the you know, help them to edit it and to find the right sound and super fun. Yeah. You know, I've been working with myself for so long. It's nice to bring another musician, another vocalist in and, you know, get to mix and master his yeah. stuff too. So it's super for sure. cool. For sure. Well, I, want, I do want to take a second here uh, for a second and let everybody know about uh, us being in the uh, Best of Columbia 2022. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we... Uh, we were very humbled by the fact that we were nominated for that. Um, so with it, so we had to have 30 nominations in 30 days in order to become uh, a chance to be in the top five. And so what they do is they take the top, the top five out of the most nominations that people were nominated. Well, I had an email sent to me. And they said, uh, you guys are definitely going to be in the top five. Um, <laughs> you, you all had... 138 nominations, 100, 158 <laughs> nominations in four hours. Oh my god! So you needed 30 in 30 yeah, days. In 30 days, you got 154. 158 in, less than in four, four hours. hours. Yeah. Oh my god! That's so we we obviously are doing something correct yes, for this community yes, somewhere along yes. the lines. Well, when you got a place that feels like home, you're yeah. doing great. You're well, doing they, great. we had the voting process already, and it's already been over and. You know, look, I don't care if we, we don't make it past top five. Mm-hmm. I really don't on that. Uh, the first, uh, first, second, and third place get published in the July and August edition of Inside Columbia. Uh, I don't really, I don't care. It's the fact that, look, the Cinderella team, the, the basically, you know, from, from basketball, the team that, that nobody gave a chance mm-hmm. to made it to the top five. So, yeah, it's, it's real humbling well. for sure. You're gonna make it. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. It'll, it's You're gonna be on the front page before you yeah. know it of that that magazine. It's so. definitely a shock to the community of, uh, around here. You know, they're realizing look that, you know, with our venue um, promoting local musicians mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know, and that's I think that's what Columbia needed. Yeah, I really do. Definitely. And we saw it. We saw it, and we jumped on it. Yeah. You know for sure. Yeah, it's it's just a great space, man. Oh, I'm so you. happy to be a part of the yeah. team. <laughs> We, we enjoy it for sure. We do. Um, one question I like to ask as well. Um, conspiracy theories. Do you happen to uh, believe in any conspiracy theories you that know, are out there? It's amusing. Yeah. It's amusing. But it's also scary. It's like, it's one of those things that as much as like I want to believe things, I don't want to know. Yeah. That's the truth. I don't even want to know. Like, I don't want to know if that's real. You know, like you're in a Bigfoot. Yes. That's yes, a, yeah. like big time Bigfoot guys. So, I swear I've seen him. So hey, I I know people that feel the same, and yeah. they swear they've seen him too. And you know that's not so much as scary to me as like thinking there's a little boy, mm-hmm. you know, um, that is reincarnated and he, you know, lived on Mars mm-hmm. and they lived forever, and you know they all died from nuclear warfare, and he came here along with some other people to save us from the same okay that's far-fetched i know like that's that's pretty intense like but again like conspiracy theories like they are and it's it's things that um you know you don't you don't want to know if that is true just lie to me you yeah. know <laughs> so yeah. um but yeah um i'm curious though i have a question for you all right sure how did you get the name Sticky? <laughs> so, you know, every episode somebody asks me how I got the nickname Sticky. And it's up to the viewers out there. We've got a little competition going. And uh, the first person that can tell me which story I tell in all these podcasts um, 
gets a jar of my moonshine. And, you know, anybody that's had it can tell you, um, the moonshine's really actually pretty good. And I've been making it, you know, 20 plus years. And so, <clears throat> how I got the nickname Sticky? Well, a lot of people know I deer hunt a lot. And uh, a lot of times before the season, when we got our trail cameras out, I like to uh, kind of set it up for the deer to come into it so I can get pictures of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see what we've got. I want to try to pattern them and everything. Well, this one particular time, um, going up the hill uh, with the tractor and everything, and we had not jars of molasses, but five gallon buckets of molasses in the tractor on the uh, in the bucket. And so we get it up there, and we got these five gallon buckets. I think we had four of them up there, and I get the first one off, no problem, and take it to my spot, and I dump it where we need to go. I go to the second one, and I reach up to grab it, and the whole thing just dumped all over me. <laughs> So, you know, anybody that knows molasses, that's yeah. some sticky yeah. stuff. That's the, that's why, you know, that's why we used it for what we were using mm -hmm. for. Well, it found me in the wrong way, and uh, I was coated in molasses, and of course, everything in the world sticks to you. When I was going to ask, yeah. and what else? What else was it? <laughs> yeah, what else was it? Yeah. So, yeah, everything stuck to me. Did you get a me. deer and that stuck to you, too? Well, probably on that one, you know, on that one. But, yeah. Uh, I got it, boys. And got so he's it. walking it's with the deer on me. his back. Yeah. But, no, um, so everything in the world stuck with me. And the guy I was with was like, man, we're just going to have to start calling you Sticky. And, you know, it kind of <laughs> stuck. So, yeah. That's how I got the nickname Sticky, for sure. That's great. Yeah, for sure. So, um, if... So let's say let's say somebody comes to you and they say, "Hey, you know, Fire White, let's. I want to learn how to. I want to learn to do what you do. What's some of the? What's something that you would tell them? Oh man, <laughs> to do what I do. I'm 35, and it took me until recently to believe in myself. So the first step is to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself. How can you expect anyone else to, um, you know, to, to believe in what you're doing? So definitely, definitely believe in yourself first step. And then, you know, you can suck all the time and that's okay. You can, you know, just be the worst at what you're doing. But the thing is, is if you keep trying and you're actually active and you're doing it every day, um, that's when you start to see results. So... Yeah, so believe in yourself and then, you know, practice your craft every day and it's okay to try new things. Um, I think that sometimes, you know, even though, you know, I feel pretty good about what I'm doing and the method to my madness and everything, like, I'm reaching, you know, I'm not trying to sound like anyone else. I don't, I don't strive, you know, to be this, I, I am a perfectionist, but I know that nothing is perfect, so, you know, just the... Yeah, so just trying trying uh, new things and uh, reaching for, you know, things that you have yet to, you don't even know, exist. So just, yeah, do it every day and uh, and believe in you. Don't be it's scared. It's bound to happen. Yeah, yeah. don't be scared. Yeah. And, and, you know, find a good team to back you, whether it's your friends or family or, um, you know, people that come out to your shows regularly because they believe in you. I think that support is yeah. is a key is a key as well absolutely. so um yeah absolutely that's, that's what i think well so to wrap this up here at the end of this i like to pull a page out of sean evans's hot ones i don't know if you happen to seen that on on youtube before but at the end of his at the end of his uh, segment that he does he says we've got this camera this camera and this camera fire white tell the world out there how to get a hold of you all right this camera, this camera, this camera. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just that one, right? For you, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you can check me out on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Um, yeah, those are the three things that I use. Uh, I want to say I'm not as active on um, uh, Instagram as I am Facebook or even YouTube, but I think that'll come in time. Like, I'm getting my feet wet, you know, and, yeah, things are happening, so that that'll get better but definitely first thing check me out on facebook i'm more active on there there we sure. go 
And if somebody wants to book you for a show, they just contact you through Facebook pretty yep. much. Yep. Yeah, Facebook And as always, there. they can contact us through the cabana as yep. well, and yep. we will Sticky hook you up. Sticky knows me, we'll hook you up. <laughs> we'll hook you up. And I'm down for whatever, house there. parties, anything. There so. we go. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. And, thank you, Sticky. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you. By all means. So, you know, folks, remember to like, comment, and subscribe here on the, our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, next up, we have Work Jones coming on to this show. Uh, so we'll see, we'll catch y'all then.